Jesus plus nothing. 100% natural, no additives. Andrew Farley is celebrating your freedom in Christ. Call in and ask your questions at 877-655-6755. That's toll free at 877-655-6755. Via satellite from Texas, it's The Grace Message with Dr. Andrew Farley. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Grace Message. I'm Andrew Farley. So glad you are joining us tonight. That number, 877-655-6755. We've got open lines, room for you right now to get in with your question tonight. Uh, Maybe you've got a question about a scripture passage. Perhaps you heard something in church recently. Uh, You're not sure about it. You want to talk it over. That's exactly why we're here for you tonight. Toll free across the United States and Canada. Uh, That number, again, 877-655-6755. And uh, we are live across the United States on Sirius XM, a number of FM and AM stations across Canada and the United States. Uh, You're welcome, if you're hearing us right now, to be a part of the uh, conversation live, even if you're live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or maybe you're joining us on our website or mobile app. You're welcome to call in and be a part of the conversation right now. We invite your calls, 877-655-6755. Of course, if you're a first-timer with us, go for it. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're a veteran caller, we'd love to hear from you as well. And maybe it's a personal problem uh, going on in your life, in your marriage, with your kids, in your church, or... Maybe it's something to do with the grace message. You're just not sure about something, and you want to bounce it off of us. Well, that's exactly why we're here. we got 30 minutes on the clock, room for you right now. Two open lines. I'll give you that number one more time so you can jump in right now, 877-655-6755. Well, uh, let's go now to uh, social media. We've got a question here uh, from Facebook, from Gail. Some religions teach that one will have a chance to accept Christ once you're dead. What's your take on this? I have two friends who died as unbelievers. Where are they now? Where is their spirit? Well, first of all, Gail, uh, we cannot be in the business of saying who's saved and who's not. The Apostle Paul says this, Do not say who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, and do not say uh, who will descend into the lower parts of the earth, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But instead, what should we say? We should say that the gospel is near. It's right up in our ear. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So we don't know the condition of your friends for certain. Remember that uh, only God sees our hearts. And uh, many, many people on their deathbed decide, you know what? I've been stiff-necked, I've been denying this gospel, I've been rejecting Jesus, and now suddenly uh, this matters to me a great deal. And so I'm going to call upon the Lord to be saved. God hears that, uh, and he honors that, and so that is really between your friends and God. We cannot make any predictions. Now, as far as uh, a a chance to accept Christ later, uh, the Scripture seems to reject that idea. Uh, It says that it is appointed for us to uh, die once and then face judgment. It doesn't say that we die once and then later get another chance. I'm quoting Hebrews 9, uh, verse 27. It is appointed unto men uh, to die once and then this judgment. Every human being is appointed uh, to face this judgment. Hebrews 9, 27 is very clear about that, and there's no gap. There's no delay. There's no second chance later. Uh, we got 10 and 50 and 100 years, some of us, on this planet to make up our minds about Jesus Christ, to make up our minds about his finished work. Uh, he lived and died and was buried and rose from the dead to give us total forgiveness and new eternal life. And it's because of him, not because of what we do for him. So this message is beautiful, it's powerful, it's in our face, it is being proclaimed all over the world, 
And this is our shot. This is our chance. And that's why there's such an urgency to get the message out and proclaim it to the world. All right, let's go to Canada and we'll talk with Kara. Hey, Kara, what's on your mind tonight, my friend? Oh, hey, Dr. Farley. Hope you're doing great. Thanks for uh, taking my call. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> This is actually my second time I've, I've been on in the last week and a half because this is uh, blowing my mind, the grace message. And I'm just getting a hold of it and running with it because it's producing a lot of fruit already in my life and just want to testify to that first like the fruit of joy and just the freedom i've been experiencing Mm. and also my friends because i've been sharing it with them it's really been happening and i just want to cut all the religious (laughs) strings off of my mind as possible so i'm just i'm running hard right now um so i'm I'm just really appreciative um but yeah first yeah yeah first john chapter um one Uh just wanted some clarity uh verses five through ten I mean, I've been taught for most of my Christian walk so far is that, you know, that confession is important and God will forgive our sins when we uh, confess and he'll cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But with uh, this new clarity now and the Holy Spirit bearing witness, like I don't need to be cleansed again. I've been cleansed once and for all. And I just uh, I would love to just hear it from you. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I think you got a, a stellar question, Kara. First of all, thanks for sharing. I'm excited that you're excited and uh, that you're being encouraged uh, by God's grace and by the fullness of the gospel message. There's a partial gospel out there, you know, that you're partially forgiven, that you're partially free from the law, that you're partially a new creation. There's a partial gospel out there, and it's really popular. It's kind of the standard fare for a lot of believers, and we're not teaching that partial gospel. We're saying you're totally forgiven, you're totally cleansed, you're totally free from the law, and you're totally a new creation in Christ. So there's a lot to celebrate about this gospel message. And when it comes to our forgiveness, you're absolutely correct. There's a very popular teaching out there, the idea that 1 John 1 verse 9 is a bar of soap for Christians to get cleansed daily. It goes a little something like this, that, you know, when you got saved, you were forgiven of all your sins up until salvation, okay? You were forgiven of your past sins, but not your future sins, they claim. So then it's up to you all of a sudden. Now that you're saved, it's up to you uh, to get forgiven and cleansed daily. So suddenly the gospel got worse because you got saved. Suddenly the gospel got less powerful. The blood of Jesus got less potent uh, because you got saved. Think about it. When you were saved, they're saying that all of your sins, 10 years, 30 years, 50 years worth, were totally wiped away, forgiven and cleansed. But now, suddenly, it's up to you to keep short accounts with God and stay forgiven and cleansed. Well, if that were true, Kara, then it would be better for you to get saved on your deathbed because then all your sins would be in your past and you would have fewer sins to manage. I mean, this wrong teaching about 1 John 1, 9 gets everybody hopping around trying to jump through hoops and get forgiven and stay forgiven. And the logical question is, what if I forget one? What if I go to bed at night and forget a sin? What if I fail to confess it? What if I fail to ask forgiveness for it? What if I die and I've got 77 unconfessed sins in my life, then what? Then what? You can't go to heaven with any sins left unforgiven and uncleansed. So what's up with that? And then somebody will swoop in and say, oh, well, you know, God doesn't worry about those sins. If, if you forget, then God forgets. <laughs> they try to stick that uh, addendum in there on the end to try to take care of their theology. But the reality is there's a context to 1 John 1, 9 that is very plain and obvious. In fact, we see it in 1 John 1, 8. (laughs) This is not rocket science. Let's read it together. It says, If we say that we have no sin, 
We are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us, all right? Who's the truth? According to John, who's the truth? Well, Jesus is the truth. He's the way, the truth, the life. All right, I want you to imagine a person that is in verse 8. They're being described there. Number one, they say they have no sin. Number two, they're deceiving themselves. And number three, the truth, who is Jesus, is not in them. Now, if you look at verse 10, you see more about this person. It says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. All right? So now I've got a full resume on this person. They say they have no sin. They're deceiving themselves. The truth is not in them. They say they've never sinned. They're making God into a liar, and God's word is not in them. Six definitions of this person. So I would ask you, is this person saved? And, of course, the answer is no way. You can't be saved and say you've never sinned. You can't be saved and uh, not have the truth in you. Uh, you can't be saved and not have God's word in you. So this person has no word in them, no truth in them, and they say they've never sinned a day in their lives. They are a sin denier. And we know for a fact any good commentary on 1 John is going to tell you that John was writing in part to fight against a heresy uh, called Gnosticism. There was an early form of Gnosticism that had two basic tenets to it. The first belief was that Jesus was not physical, that God would never stoop so low as to come in, in human flesh. And then secondly, the second tenet of Gnosticism was that sin is not real or doesn't matter. And so they were sin deniers and they were Jesus in the flesh deniers. They denied those two things, the physicality of Jesus and the reality of sin. So John is writing to fight against this heresy, and he's very politely fighting it. He is saying, if we, any one of us, are saying that we have no sin, if we, any one of us, are saying that we have never sinned, then we're crazy. We're out of our minds. We need to come to our senses. But look, if we will come to our senses, if we will just confess our sins, if we will admit our sinfulness, then guess what God will do? He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this is an invitation for the sin denier to come to their senses and receive what? What does it say? It says forgiveness and cleansing of how much? Of all unrighteousness. This is not just Monday's sins or Wednesday's sins. This is not 24 hours of sins. This is about someone needing to admit their sinfulness so that they can receive Christ and be forgiven and cleansed of everything they've ever done and ever will do. So this is about becoming a believer. Now, if you're already a believer, which you are, Kara, then this is not some bar of soap for you to get forgiven and get cleansed. No, Jesus already did that. Hebrews 10, verse 14 says, By one sacrifice you've been made perfect forever. Now, even though it's a very popular idea that Christians need to get forgiveness daily, it's not a scriptural idea. The book of Hebrews rejects it outright. If you look in Hebrews 6 to 10, you're going to find a power-packed passage that uh, contrasts two different kinds of forgiveness. The first kind is again and again forgiveness, you know, progressive forgiveness, you know, like paying off your car or paying off your mortgage, little by little forgiveness. And this is what they had in the Old Testament with the Day of Atonement, year after year, day after day, repeatedly, endlessly. They would offer more and more sacrifices to get more and more forgiveness. Now, have you noticed Jesus is not dying anymore? Have you noticed Jesus only died once? And it worked the first time. 
No repeat needed. Now, how many of your sins did Jesus die for? We all say, all, and everybody gives a big amen. And then five minutes later, we're asking God if he might forgive us for our sins. What are we doing? We're asking him to do what he's already done. If Jesus were going to forgive any more of your sins, he would have to die all over again. But the book of Hebrews tells us that he is not up in heaven dying over and over. He has died once for all. He has taken away your sins once for all. And what 1 John 1, 9 is, is it's an invitation to the sin denier to become a Christian and be forgiven and cleansed of everything. And that's what we have in Christ. Now, I can hear somebody, maybe they've heard this for the very first time tonight, and they're thinking, well, then what should I do when I sin? I mean, if I don't have to get down on the floor and beg and plead and hope and wait for more forgiveness, then what should I do when I sin? Well, here's a crazy idea. How about you stop? (laughs) How about you turn from it? How about you say no to sin? How about you count yourself dead to sin and alive to God? How about you listen to the counsel of the Spirit and move forward rejecting that sin? Now, people will try to twist what we're saying. Over and over, we'll see uh, false accusations against us about teaching the finished work of Christ. Anytime you tell some Christians that they're totally forgiven, they seem to reject the message. They seem to think, oh, you're saying just go out and do whatever you want. You're saying just go out and sin. No, I'm saying you're sinning just fine right now, aren't you? You're sinning just fine right now when you're scared of God, when you believe you could lose your salvation, when you think you got to beg for forgiveness every day. You're still sinning just fine, aren't you? So what if you were to give the grace of God a chance? And when people give the grace of God a chance, just like you have, Kara, they start experiencing that joy of being clean and close to God. Uh, Jesus put it this way. He said, if you are forgiven little, you're going to love little. That means if you're forgiven much, you're going to love much. So if we run around planet Earth thinking that we've been forgiven little or that we're only forgiven when we apologize— then guess what? We're going to love little, and we're also going to pass that on to other people. We're going to forgive people only when they apologize. So, you know, I just don't get it. Uh, People think uh, that we're talking about sin and more or something, and we're just talking about the simple fact that the cross actually worked that it worked the first time, no repeat needed. There are a thousand reasons to say no to sin, uh, but uh, getting more forgiveness is not one of those reasons. There's a thousand reasons to live a godly life, but getting more forgiveness is not one of those reasons. There's loads of reasons. Look at you. You've got a new heart, a new nature, a new spirit. You've got God's spirit living in you. Not to mention all these people who think, uh, oh, man, this is going to lead to more sin. Well, here's what I'd say to that. Sin is miserable. No, thank you. Uh, I don't want to be totally forgiven and miserable. I want to be totally forgiven and fulfilled. So I'm going to choose to walk by the Spirit, not so that I can get cleaner in front of God. I'm going to choose to walk by the Spirit because it works. It's fulfilling. I mean, God knows what he's doing. He's God. And so walking by his Spirit fits me perfectly. Uh, It fits my design. So, Kara, I hope that helps. I'll put you back on and see. Does that help make sense of 1 John 1, 9? I'm laughing because it's like so good. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, yeah. It's becoming very crystal clear, and I'm excited to awesome. share it with people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear the enthusiasm. See what happens to people like Kara. I mean, they get clarity on the finished work of Christ, and their next thought is not, I'm going to go sin. No, their next thought is, I'm going to share this. 
because it is incredible, folks. This is what the early church was excited about. Do you think the early church was excited about a daily bar of soap trying to get right every hour? Do you think that they were excited about a self-improvement program of rule-keeping? No way. That's not what they were willing to be persecuted, tortured, and killed for. I'll tell you what caused the early church to explode. It was this message of the finished work of Christ. This is unbelievable that God would do this for us. This kind of forgiveness. Oh my goodness. So now we're heading into this Easter weekend celebrating the cross and the resurrection. Are you going to settle for a partial gospel? You know, a message of partial forgiveness, a message of you're forgiven if you remember to ask, a message of it, you're forgiven if you remember to confess everyone, or are you going to go for that gospel message that rocked the early church, the one that Kara's excited about, the one that we proclaim every weeknight, the gospel where it really is finished. Your sins are gone. They're remembered no more. They're removed as far as the east is from the west. God keeps no record of your wrongs, and that will never, ever change. He promises, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. How can he promise this? Because you are totally forgiven forever. This is powerful, and it is essential. No other gospel will do. This is it. This is the real thing. This is what inspires and motivates us to live from the heart level. So, Kara, thank you so much uh, for your question tonight. We love your enthusiasm, your joy. Reach out to us again anytime. Great to hear from you. Well, you're listening to The Grace Message. I'm Andrew Farley. So excited that you joined us tonight. You can dive a little deeper at andrewfarley.org. And if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, of course, we invite you to join us for Easter Sunday at The Grace Church right here in Las Colinas, Texas. So if you're in the neighborhood, come see us at 1030 a.m. this coming Sunday as we celebrate the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can find out more at our website at thegracechurch.org. That's thegracechurch.org. But if you are in the DFW area, come by and see us. We're at 4950 North O'Connor Road in Irving, Texas. That's 4950 North O'Connor Road in Irving, Texas. And our service starts at 1030 a.m. We'd love to see you. Join us this weekend as we celebrate the resurrection life of Jesus Christ, his resurrection and yours. That's right. Oh my goodness, have you seen it? It's not just about him rising from the dead. He already proved his power over death. Remember when he raised Lazarus from the dead? Well, his power has been proven by that alone. So why? Why did Jesus have to rise out of that grave? Because he was going to take you with him. And when we receive Christ, we are raised to a newness of life. I'm not talking about that new body that you'll get someday. That will be fantastic. But I'm talking about that resurrection life that you have here, right now. In this very moment, you are bonded and fused to Jesus. His prayer request for you was that you would experience a vine branches bond with him. And that prayer was answered. You are as close to Jesus as you'll ever be. Did you hear that? You're as close to Christ, as close to God as you can be? I know what you've heard. Three steps to get closer. Five ways to get closer to God. Well, we have an exciting proclamation in the gospel. You are one spirit with the Lord. It's a finished work. He brought you near to him by the blood of Jesus. And by his resurrection life in you, you've been bonded to him forever. Hey, that means you're as close as you can get. For more information on the broadcast ministry of Dr. Andrew Farley, please visit andrewfarley.org. That's andrewfarley.org. 
Join us next time as we invite you to celebrate the grace message with Dr. Andrew Farley. This program is sponsored by your generous financial support.